Hello, everyone. And today we're talking about 3D resin printing, hollowing your parts. Should you? When should you? Why should you? And really, what's the best way to do it? A lot of people have asked me this question over the years that I've been doing resin printing. And honestly, hollowing for me was a game changer back in the day when I figured it out. Heavy parts were often a problem because I had to stick a lot of heavy supports on them to make sure that they didn't pop off the build or snap supports. I also realized that resin was a big game changer too, and using a better material meant that I didn't really have to use as heavy of a support, but still, it tended to be a problem. Hollowing changed that, and honestly, it's been something that I've used ever since, but only on the parts that need it. There are sometimes things that don't need to be hollowed, and in today's episode, I'm going to hopefully explain the mystery as to what you should hollow, why, and probably the things you shouldn't hollow too. I'll cover all of that, or at least I'll try to cover most of it. Here we go. All right, here we are taking a look at some parts. And yes, for those who don't know, this is Bowsette. Bowser turned into a lady. I know it's weird. I don't know. You guys are just degenerates. Internet just generally, generally made of degenerates. Someone came up with this. Uh, so we're, we're going to look at a couple of parts, and I'm going to go over whether you would or wouldn't hollow. I feel like I'm in elementary school, but hey, whatever. So we're going to take a look. The bullet bill that she sits on top of rests on top of the pedestal which is here all right would you hold this absolutely look at how much material this would take up otherwise this thing is gigantic would i hollow it yeah now how would i go about hollowing something like this Easy. Pop over to the prepare tab. You do this before you do anything else. Choose your hollowing 3D. Load your preset or choose one. These are my settings, by the way. Take a minute to take that. This is how I hollow everything I print. All right. So once it's hollow, we can look at the inside. Cool. Now, we want to place drain holes. So what is a drain hole? Why are they important? Well, all right, a couple of reasons. One, if you don't have drain holes in proper places, your print is not going to succeed in most cases because it's going to have too much of what we call suction. Now, when a print comes off of a vat like this, There's a pulling that happens. And if during that pulling, there is no place for the vacuum of air to escape and the resin to escape, you're going to get a very hard pop. Now, doesn't necessarily mean going to fail. You have a very higher, sorry, a much higher chance of it failing than if you were to do those drain holes properly. Now, what you see me doing here is I'm preparing air holes. These are actually not drain holes because the drain holes are going to start at the beginning. Air holes are what help aerate the model while you're cleaning it and preparing it for finishing. They also help during the printing process, but it's really just as important during the cleaning and after or post curing process as well. So what you need to do is you need to figure out where your print starts. So this is the first area that gets printed and immediately it's gonna be a suction cup. See, here, we'll do the suction cup detector and like she so I can show you what I mean. See, massive suction point there. And that is huge until this hole creates itself. So we need to fix that. So what we need to do is we need to go back down to here we need to, to take a look and go, okay, this is where the print starts. So the first thing I want to do is put a hole here and then one next to it and then one immediately next to it. This is for fluid. This is for air. 
This is just in case these two holes don't drain enough or they get clogged or they become resin, like, like resin coats them. Because depending on their size, all of those things can happen. Now, once you've done that, go ahead and take a look. Make sure that the holes aren't protruding in anything, cutting holes into something they're not supposed to. Then the next thing you want to do is that what you saw me do originally, which was creating these additional holes on other points in the model that don't necessarily need to be there for draining, but they need to be there for later for cleaning to make sure that when you go to put this thing in your alcohol or whatever cleaner you use, that it doesn't bob back up to the top because there's a little vacuum inside where it won't allow fluid in. This will help that. The more holes you have up top, the better. I create a couple of holes here, like a little chimney, and a few down here at the bottom as well. This will help during cleaning. And um, again, it doesn't hurt anything to have the extra holes. It's going to be good during the printing process to have more holes than less. So you have a few choices when it comes to holes and lychee. You can leave these alone, and then you can continue working on your print. I don't recommend doing that. I don't like the way these holes work. I've had glitches with them. There have been all sorts of problems through the times that I've used them. I don't do this anymore. What I do is I take the model, I will highlight it, selecting all the holes I've created, and I will cut them out. Sometimes this causes the file to go into disrepair, in which case you just have to click repair and it'll, it'll fix itself. So now that we've cut the holes out, you're ready to support this sucker. And this thing is good to go. Now look at the difference of material this is going to take up versus that gigantic mass that it was going to take up before. Now you can't tell me that's not going to be worth the savings of money right there. Let's take a few other parts up for consideration, shall we? How about these arms, for example? Now, back when I first started printing and learning how to hollow, I probably would have told you to hollow the arms, because why not? To be honest, arms are often a pain. They don't have enough room to put proper drain holes on the key areas. So, no, don't hollow arms. How about this tail? Something you might want to hollow? Mm, no, not the tail either. I never hollow faces or hair bits as those tend to just cause more issues when you try to do that. Unless the head is, oh, I don't know. This big. I don't see the point. And we don't usually make them that big. Maybe that big. But even then, I still wouldn't hollow the head. Heads are cavernous. They usually have a lot of little weird bits and details on the outside, which causes them to contain and scoop in resin in places like, I don't know, this crown, those horns, her ears. So yes, hollowing the heads is a no-no. Following ponytails and things like hair bits is also a no-no. They also don't really use up that much material, and they're no bigger than a mini. So honestly, what are you hollowing them for? The pedestal. Yes, for the love of everything, please hollow things like this. I mean, unless you need it for the weight. Now, don't get me wrong. Some people say, oh, you shouldn't hollow the pedestals or the bases because you need them for weight. They help keep the figurine down. Well, this one unfortunately suffers from the fact that it has one single pedestal holding that bu bu that giant bullet bill, which also holds Bowsette on top of it, which technically wobbles a little bit. So I have a danger that it's, you have more than tipping over to worry about with this piece. I think it's, it's possible that unless you put a piece of armature up in there, it might break after a while. So um, just food for thought for anyone who's printing this particular one. Um, not to say that this is a problem, and I haven't said that it's going to break, but it's potential that it could break. Um, if you're going to hollow something like this, you're going to want to do it similar to the way I did the bullet bill. You're going to do the 3D, load your preset, or not. If you don't have one, just set your settings however you want them. Don't go thinner than a 1.7 millimeter wall. 
you'll regret it. It'll, it'll be terrible. Go ahead and place your holes. Now, again, we're going to do something similar that we did with the bill. We're going to place our air holes up at the top. Then I'm going to place my vent at the bottom. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, though. That's my vent. And then we're going to just put a larger circle in the middle. I'm going to put another bigger one there, slightly larger one there. Put a couple vents there. And that should be enough. And again, you're going to want to repeat the process of cutting the holes out. And then you'll have your permanently hollowed piece. And you will save so much material this way. Trust me on that one. Look at that. The difference. And if you wanted to weigh it down, technically what you could do is you could fill it up with sand. And then you could cap those holes if you wanted to. Now, other things like the flames or let's say like the Goomba. Now... Oddly enough, yeah, the Goomba is kind of small, and he's about the size of a mini, but I do like to save resin, and I even tend to hollow things like this shell here because they just, it's just unnecessary weight. Now, the flame, eh, you could probably do this solid, and honestly, you might even be able to print something like this off the plate, minus a few little tips that go down like this one here, and a couple of them up top. But you don't need to hollow stuff like the flame, the Goomba, or the shell. You can hollow them if you want, but just remember, that's a bit excessive, at least in the sense of, like, you don't need to. I actually will hollow things like this because they're pretty easy to do so, in which case you can simply just load your presets and then cut a couple of holes in the bottom, like so, and they're done i mean that's it that's all it takes really they don't even need much venting space so when you go to clean them you're good uh the only thing you may have to worry about is the outside of the head there creates a little bit of a suction cup here around the back which i suppose you could put little holes at the bottom of his head but again this is probably why you want to just avoid doing hollowing on on shapes and objects like this because it just creates more problems than it's worth, to be honest, and you don't need to. I'll do it because I'm crazy in some instances, but you don't have to. Other things that you'd want to be able to hollow are things like legs. Legs are good things to hollow because they're often large and they're bulky and they can be kind of thick in the middle. So you could save some material here by hollowing out legs. They also have a decent point of uh, connection where the keys are. So it's a decent enough area to put drain holes and vents and things like that where I don't have to worry about, oh, I don't have space to do that. So in short, though, pretty much hollow the big stuff that's going to waste your resin. Don't hollow the small stuff that's not. Sometimes it's good to have a couple of extra things on your base that aren't necessarily just the base. It might weight it down. It might prevent the figurine from falling over. And overall, it does sometimes make the material feel cooler when it has more weight to it. Hollowing them sometimes makes them feel real cheap. So when you have the solid pieces next to the hollow pieces, sometimes you go, hmm, just feels cooler to have it solid. But remember, it's not always worth it to waste all the, necessary, all the unnecessary material just to have the feeling of having the solid piece. Sometimes it's just better to hollow it, like with the bullet bill or the base or things like legs and stuff like that. Or the torsos, which I didn't go over in this particular episode because, honestly, I don't want YouTube to flag this video because none of the stuff that I actually really print for most people is kind of not appropriate for YouTube. I mean, except for, like, the tabletop stuff. A lot of these figurines are a little, <clears throat> if you know what I mean. But anyway, point being is that those kinds of body parts would be good for hollow. Torsos, upper body, lower body, uh, busts, things like that. Those would be good. Not heads, not arms, um, not things like tails and stuff like that. You could get away with hollowing things like the Goomba, like I showed you, 
or even the fire and the turtle shell, but you don't need to. Things like the turtle shell, the only reason you might want to hollow it is because it's just a big surface area that's being printed. It's not huge as an object, but it's got big areas to print. So it's just easier sometimes to have a hollow object because then you don't have to worry about all that stress and the strain on your supports. You can use lighter supports and then you don't have to worry about the weight of the object. This also saves me weight too because this attaches to her back. So having a hollow shell versus having a solid shell meant that the shell could attach to her back and it wouldn't pull her backwards. And I wouldn't have to worry about it breaking over time because the shell's heavy or something silly like that. Not that it's like huge, but still, every little gram matters. I mean, weight is weight, physics and gravity and all that. I mean, we talked about this. Well, something similar to this. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the hollowing concepts. I hope that this helped anybody that was looking for some insight as to maybe when they're supposed to hollow stuff or what's the best way to hollow stuff or just in general, when should I hollow something? I hope this helps and I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday and uh, I hope this episode finds you in good health in the new year and uh, we have a lot more planned for 2025. Thank you all for watching as always. See you all soon.